This lecture is on language development uh, by Chomsky. Uh, it's not going to be too much of a lecture, just a little bit of a narration of the text that's going to be there. Uh, this will cover the other part of Chomsky that we didn't get a chance to cover uh, earlier in the year. Um, and we'll also be looking at Lev Vygotsky's ideas of cognitive development, both of which involve language. So language is the common theme here. Um, and then it's also language in terms of our development as well. So Chomsky said that in the first four months, children hit what we call the babbling stage. Um, this is more like ma, 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 da, 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 things like that. Uh, it's not an imitation of adult speech. Um, and what's really interesting about this one is that it can include sounds from languages that weren't spoken in the, in the household. Um, but by 10 months, uh, a child will no longer be able to make the sounds that's not part of their native language. Uh, so in the babbling speech stage where they can go ma, 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 da, 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 they're not saying mama or dada, they're just babbling with different sounds. Uh, they're also including sounds that some of us may not have comprehension for because we uh, can't detect it because it's not our negative native language. But by 10 months, we hit the household language stage, um, which is being able to hear and produce sounds from uh, the native tongue uh, or the tongue within the household. Um, but sounds that are made outside the, the home language at this point is lost. Uh, at 12 months, you hit the one word stage. Um, this is where uh, an infant's brain has begun to connect the meaning of a word with uh, the sounds that it's part of. Um, often these are nouns uh, that label objects or people like dog, mommy, daddy, things like that. At two years, uh, we have the two word stage um, and also uh, telegraphic speech, um, uh, which are mostly nouns and verbs together. Um, and the words are in a sensible order. So like the telegraphic speech would be like car goes. So that's a noun and verb together. Vygotsky is a little bit more complicated than Chomsky. Chomsky's was more just stages. For Vygotsky, it's really all about cognitive development, um, which makes him very similar to Jean Piaget, which I covered in the lecture on infancy and childhood. But the differences between the two is that with Piaget, he discussed how uh, interaction uh, with the physical environment creates growth um, and that growth itself is universal, which is why we have different stages. Every kid ex experiences the same kind of growth. Um, independent exploration where kids do things on their own uh, is part of that growth. And the language is dependent on the thoughts that the child has internally. That's Piaget. Vygotsky, on the other hand, is cognitive growth through interaction with the social environment, uh, which is basically um, rather than interacting with objects and your uh, physical environment, it's interacting with the people uh, that's within the social environment. Um, some of the things that we see is uh, initially kids have what we call elementary mental functions. They can pay attention, they can sense things, they can perceive things, and they can remember. Um, but the rest of their cognitive development that Vygotsky discusses uh, is within a sociocultural environment, uh, which means that this is interaction with people. Uh, so like parents, um, brothers and sisters, daycare providers, uh, other peers. Um, and interaction within those environment makes these uh, functions, those main functions, attention, sensation, perception, memory, more sophisticated. They become higher mental functions. They become more advanced. Uh, parents and tutors uh, are, off, are what we call more knowledgeable others, and they provide what we call scaffolding. Now, scaffolding is assistance. This allows children to move temporarily to a higher mental level called the zone of proximal development. If you don't take a look at this next picture, you can see the ZPD or the zone of proximal development. Uh, the blue circle in the center is what a child can do on their own. Um, however, the ZPD is what they can do with help from others and also with help from things like technology and, and tools, uh, though that one has come a little bit later. Uh, everything else is beyond their reach. Now, the idea is that when knowledgeable others assist a child through language, and language here is key, uh, they're able to get into their ZPD, 
their zone of proximal development. Um, tools and technology like computers and books also do this. Uh, and then what we find is that uh, ultimately, once a child is uh, finished or finished with that connection, that scaffolding, and scaffolding is that assistance, um, and this is done through language, uh, then that blue circle of what they can do on their own actually increases. Um, and that is, again, how a child experiences growth. So if we take a look at this again, we see that uh, the parents and tutors, these more knowledgeable others, provide this scaffolding through language uh, to allow children to move to this next level. Um, and then once they've done that, what they can do increases. Now, the last thing that uh, Vygotsky discussed was the idea that language is critical to cognitive development. Um, this is the primary way for adults to transmit information to children. This is the primary way where we get children into that zone of proximal development. Um, and he believed that this was an incredibly powerful tool for intellectual adaptation, um, for us to change the way we think and adjust the way we think uh, with new information and new connections with others. Now, one other thing that Vygotsky talked about was the different kinds of language. Um, because language here is key. It's obviously how this connection is made and how that cognitive growth takes place. Uh, from the ages of two plus, Vygotsky says that children can have what we call social speech, um, which is external communication used to talk to others, which means they can uh, talk to them, we can talk to them, uh, they can talk to other people and so on. Uh, and this really allows a child to begin to interact uh, much more than just with physicality. Uh, at age three, a child then begins to develop what we call private speech. This is like your inner monologue, uh, but yet it's done out loud. Um, so a lot of times uh, this is when a kid is talking to themselves um, and it serves as an intellectual function when they talk to themselves between ages of three and seven, because this is kind of how they go through their thoughts. Uh, but by seven, uh, that private speech becomes inner speech um, and it becomes silent. Uh, and that's now what we call our inner monologue. Um, and not only is this, is this still used for cognitive development, but it's also used for self-regulation, like telling yourself, no, I shouldn't cheat on that assignment or things like that. Uh, at birth, Vygotsky says that thought and speech are separate. Uh, but by age three, uh, they begin to merge where now uh, we can think and to talk about those things that we're thinking about and they become kind of connected together. Um, and finally, that the private and inner speech and the way a child talks to themselves, a way a child has that inner monologue is a product of that social environment. It's a product of those lessons that they've been taught by their parents uh, and by other and by peers uh, and by other people uh, within their environment. I hope this provide some good information about Chomsky and Vygotsky. I know Vygotsky in particular can be a little bit confusing. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.